Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. We're going to look at verses 32 and 33. Matthew, Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 33. The title of the message is, Have You Been Confessing Christ Before Man? Have you been confessing Christ before man? Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 33. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before man, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before man, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Brother Nathan, can you please pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day, being for everything you gave me as a prayer that you feed us with the message, Lord, and I pray that, Lord, that we become more of our soldiers of Christ for you, Lord, and I pray that we think about others, and I'm sure that a lot of people, the first time when they got saved, the first thing that they want to do was to go out there and be a witness, and as time goes by, sometimes we get dry and we lose mm-hmm. that zeal, and Father, I pray that this message will be able to start that fire up again, and bring back the zeal that we once had. We got the zeal that we once were willing to give up everything. We got the zeal that we didn't care what other people said. We didn't care what our peers said, but we just wanted to tell them about Christ. Father, thank you for everyone that's here. Thank you for Pastor Jay. Please bless this message. Lord, yes. Pray in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have you been confessing Christ before man? As a Christian, it is your duty to confess Christ before man also known as witnessing. The Bible has a definite warning to the silent believers in the both Testaments. Are you a secret believer, a.k.a. silent believer? Many times, people don't know who you are because you never confess Christ before anybody. And Lord Jesus Christ said, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before man, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before man, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Do you want to be denied by Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, that's the last thing I think you want to happen in your life, especially at the judgment. But many Christians, majority of the Christians, will be denied by Jesus Christ. Doesn't mean that you're going to burn in hell. Once you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to heaven no matter what. But what you've done after you got saved, you'll be judged. And if you do not confess Christ before man, the Lord will have to judge you and deny you at the judgment. That's where many people will lose their rewards as well. Are you a secret believer? Are you a silent believer? Being silent, being in secret, is not a good thing. In any relationship, can you imagine? You're marrying that person, but that person is always silent, and they're in secret all the time. I mean, would you want to marry that person? The whole thing about relationship is what? being open, transparent, understanding each other. If that person never opens their mouth, how am I going to understand how they feel? People could have poker faces. So I don't know if you're happy. I don't know if you're angry. I don't know if you're sad. And I don't know if you're worrying. I don't know. But many Christians, including yourself, many times, are a secret believer, silent believer. And in this country, where there's most freedom being a Christian, you're being a silent and secret believer. I mean, if you were in North Korea, China, I mean, any of these communist countries, there's a huge danger confessing Christ before man. Then you have to be wise. Compared to them, you have so much freedom. Amen. Right. Then, when you're standing next to those believers from those countries, how shameful are you? Yes. They want to do it, but they can many times because they're going to get killed. Right. They have to do it in secret anyways. 
They have a rightful reasons. But you and I don't have rightful reasons to be a secret believer in this country. You and I don't have a rightful reason to be a silent believer in this country when so many of other religions and propagandas are preached everywhere. They preach about equal rights everywhere. They preach about this religion, that religion. Then why are you a silent believer? If you are among them, you would definitely go out there and do what they do, right? Oh, yeah. Give more money to the poor. Solve this homelessness problem, right? Equality for this race, that race, this gender, that gender, right? But when it comes to preaching about Lord Jesus Christ, especially in these times where people are more reminded because it's Christmas time, you stay silent. You know what's the worst thing a human being could do? When their voice can make change, but they stay silent. If someone is getting mugged on the street, are you going to just ignore? I'm not asking you to go out there and fight the mugger, right? Or the criminal. But something that you could do, you could use your voice. You could yell, scream, or even just call. Right. But the worst thing about Americans nowadays is that you're just ignorant. And Bible believers are like the quietest bunch out there many times. I mean, there's always someone like, you know, Pastor Jim Kim, right? He'll be speaking everywhere, right? But for every one Pastor Jim Kim, there's nine other silent Christians out there. Always doing that average from those spies, right? Two out of 12, okay. 10 out of 12, it's not okay. And we're not talking about just, you know, average, below average, you know, people out there. They're like the leaders of their tribes. They had qualifications, right? right? But they came back with bad report, which means... Just using that average, one out of six will be the only one who will be faithful. But are you that one out of six? You don't have to be that other majority who stays silent, who's secretive. I think one of the worst quality of a human being is that having a lot of secrets. You know, it's not a good thing. How can I trust you if you're just full of secrets? Can you imagine in a marriage, both of the spouses just have so many secrets to each other. But when that secret is revealed and it's a bad thing, how do you think the other spouse will be feel? I mean, feeling, right? They'll be devastated. If Lord Je Jesus Christ sees your Christian walk right now, I mean, will he be disappointed? Think about it. If you had regular conversation with him, if you had a right relationship with Jesus Christ, this is not an issue. I know you'll be confessing Christ before man. But if you haven't, because you have a lot of issues. But remember this, though. The stories that we've seen in the Word of God, it, it, is, possible to, it is possible to be a secret believer, but however, it's going to be a short time. God's going to make you, or God's going to give you opportunity to confess Christ before man. If your question today is that, you know what, I just didn't have any opportunity to confess Christ before man. Okay, within this coming week, you're going to have opportunity to confess Christ before man. You could actually confess Christ before man when you walk out this door. I mean, there's an example of Joseph of Arimathea. He was a secret believer but later openly confessed Christ by asking Pilate for the body of Jesus Christ. Nicodemus comes to Christ at night, but doesn't stand up for him publicly until years later before the Sanhedrin. Many of the chief rulers believed in Christ, but because of Pharisees who ran the synagogue, did not confess him lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. John 12, 42 and 43. Secret believer 
will eventually be put in a spot to confess Christ. Think about it. Apostle Peter. You think you're better than Apostle Peter? No. I certainly am not. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't even get near him, right? Peter cursed, sweared, and denied the Lord Jesus three times. However, after the resurrection, the Lord puts him on the board and made him confess him three times before other disciples. Lord will give you opportunity. It's up to you to confess Christ before man. It can't be secretive life of a Christian anymore. Your life shouldn't end with the legacy of you being a silent believer. You know what's the, I guess, saddest thing? When a Christian passes away, people come to funeral, their acquaintance and their question is, well, I didn't know he was a Christian. I didn't know she was a Christian. Never talked about Bible. Never talked about salvation. Never talked about Jesus Christ. I mean, we drank together. I mean, we smoked weed together. We went to places together. I mean, we went to bar and all that stuff. I mean, we, we, you know, talked about a lot of dirty jokes and stuff, right? We went to many, many dates with different people all the time. Wow, he was a Christian? She was a Christian? I mean, people will be shocked. Then point number one, what are some hindrances? What is stopping you from confessing Christ before men? I mean, there shouldn't be any if you are following commands of Christ, right? But however, because you don't, there's going to be hindrances. Number one hindrance is what? Fear of man. You fear man. That's why you do not confess Christ before man. Proverbs 29, 25 says, The fear of man bringeth a snare. You are scared of people. You are scared of man. I mean, there's two things, right? Either you're, you, you fear God or you fear man. Yeah. You can have both. If you fear man, you're not going to fear God. If you fear God, you are not going to fear man. The reason you don't confess Christ is you're afraid of what other men will say about you, what other men will talk about you, the way they will look at you. I mean, if Lord Jesus Christ cared about what other people looked at him while shedding his precious blood and dying for you and I, carrying the cross, I mean, then he would, he, he would be like, oh, man, oh, man, you know, maybe I should stop. But he feared God, his father. He did not fear man. That's why he was able to go through and sacrifice himself for you and I, shedding his precious blood. The reason sometimes you get to a point where, you know what? I'm dedicated. I committed. I'm not going to stop from confessing Christ before man. Your lips are about to open but the person in front of you is frowning at you. They're angry at you. You know, you see some hand movement, right? Maybe fist is forming. You're like, oh, man, I got to stop, you know. Lord, you know, I had the intention to do it. I mean, how many times do you guys always say, I had intention to do it? I mean, intention is nothing if you don't follow through. Right. True. <laughs> so many politicians say, I had intention to do this. And I, my intention was to solve, you know, homelessness. My intention was to, you know, solve this crime, my poverty, everything. They have good intentions, right? But they never do it. You and I could have best intentions in the whole wide world. Our intention is to what? Witness to as many people as we can. I'm not saying that it's wrong. You should have it in the first place. But if you don't put it into action, what's the point? It's like, it's like a kid telling mom, Mom, I have intention to wash and brush my teeth every night. But every night you get tired, every night you get lazy. You're like, you know, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it, right? And what's the result? You have bad breath and you're dirty. You never went through it. But so many Christians, you have good intentions, but once you face that man, because you fear man, you get stopped right there. 
your mouth gets ziplocked, right? Your eyes become like, you know, how should I say, loses focus. And then trying to look other way. What are you trying to tell me? What is this? You know, was it you who gave me this? Was it you who tried to talk about Jesus Christ? Like, ah, oh, it wasn't me. You know, it was someone else. You know, yeah. Well, you thought it was me? Oh no, no, no! You're talking to the wrong person, right? The worst day, you start speaking different language, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna go there. Like, you start speaking in Chinese, Korean, Spanish, right? Portuguese, you know, anything to avoid that situation. You and I tend to forget that Philippians 4.13 is real. It's the word of God. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I mean, shouldn't you rely on Christ instead of yourself? Shouldn't you be scared of Lord Jesus Christ instead of man? What can man do unto you unless they get permission from the Lord? Have you ever realized only way you be harmed, only way you suffer, only way you be bitten, if Lord gives permission to the devil, right? Just like how devil went to the Lord when he was attacking Job, right? He cannot harm you unless he gets permission from the Lord. God has to give you that. Give him or whatever that position, I mean, permission. Then when you realize that, man, I serve an almighty God who has power more than anything in this world, and why should I be scared what man will do unto me right. when I confess Christ before man? I mean, 1 John four eighteen says, There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So perfect love casts out fear. And you have that perfect love in Jesus Christ. Whatever that man will do unto you, it's not going to matter if you're doing it for Lord Jesus Christ. You suffer for him? Great! How many people can say, you know, I tried to confess Christ before man, and someone hit me. I mean, as long as you don't fight back too hard, right? I mean, you know, I mean, that's a good testimony. How many people, you know, when you are trying to pass that track and someone just, you know, started cussing at you, just, they just went berserk? I mean, if you've been doing this long enough, I'm sure you had those experiences, right? If you've been doing it often enough, if you haven't been that silent and secretive believer, you know these things happen to you. But you know what? Those people actually get saved. Those are the people actually, if you get over that first initial shock of them getting angry, cussing, and they calm down and you start talking to them, they actually are more open than righteous people, self-righteous people. You try to talk to them, they say, I'm okay, you know. I go to church, you know, I do good works, you know. Uh, I'm a deacon of the church. I'm a pastor of a church. It doesn't matter if you're a pastor of a church. If you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're not saved. You're going to hell as a pastor of a church. I mean, so many false pastors are out there anyways. Yes. Then you think about it. What has stopped me? What's been that stumbling block when it comes to me confessing Christ before man? Has that been man, right? Have I feared what man would do unto me? They don't have control over your life. They don't. Especially if you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, who has the control? Lord himself has the control. You have to understand. You have to get over that mindset of, you know what? That person is very important. 
I can never open my mouth about Jesus Christ to them. Like you already shut your mind, right? That's what you do. You know what? I'm not saying, you know, you're, you're being very, how should I say, unwise about it. And then you start going to the work. And first thing you're sending out to all your coworkers is, hey, if you don't trust Christ as your Savior, you're going to burn in hell, you know? Okay, it's a good way to lose your job, right? You have to find the ordinances of man. You have to follow, the, you know, wherever you're at, company policy and whatnot. But there's always opportunity when it comes to one-on-one witnessing, right? All followers, right? Where they cannot incriminate you. There's always opportunities out there. And if you do not fear them, you fear God and you love their souls, then God's going to give that opportunity. He will, because the Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Lord wants every man to be saved. That's his will. Contrary to some people out there, all, you know, your God, you know, is a hateful God who wants to send everybody to hell. He's not. He wants people to get saved first and foremost. But if you reject his salvation, then you're going to burn in hell. I mean, there's no excuse. Yeah. Then, as a Christian, are you going to make fear of man your hindrance to confessing Christ no. before man? Or are you going to change that mindset? Amen. Right? I am going to confess Christ before man as Lord gives me opportunity in wise ways, right? Yeah. And confess Christ no matter what they would do unto me. If everyone thought like you and me where we get scared, then nobody would hear the gospel. Yeah. There will be no missionaries, right. right? Because people are out there, few people out there to serve Christ and not fearing men, these gospels are still being preached. You and I need to be that people. You and I need to be that person where I'm going to confess Christ before men, no matter what they will do unto me. And in order to do that, secondly, you can't be ashamed. You can't be ashamed of the gospel. Right? If someone were to ask you, how do you think you're going to go to heaven? And people are giving all the answers. Uh, you know, good works. Being like Mother Teresa. Being like Joel Austin. You know, being like all those, you know, good people out there. Then are you going to be like, ah, you know what, if I bring up Jesus Christ, you know, you might be offending some people. They had their chance to say stuff. How come you can't say it? Come on. Me, I could go to heaven because only through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to say it. Right? I mean, in a class, I was taking some political science class. It's a simple question. They said, hey, you know, who's against homosexuality? It was back in like early, I don't even know when I went to college, right? Or maybe early 2000 or, you know, late 90s, I don't know. <laughs> and I was in a class, and the professor goes, hey, if you're against homosexuality, stand on this side. If you are for homosexuality, stand on that side. You know, it was, it was kind of more open back then. So I stood there with about five people, and like 30 other people were standing over there. Of course, professors are not going to ask the majority, right? Too many people waste time. Ask the few people. So what's the reason, right? And some people was, oh, you know, I, I don't think it's not, it's right. You know, I just said it. You know, it's against, against the Bible. Amen. Yeah. Good. You know, I mean, my belief in Christianity is against it. Simple as that. Yes. And one another black guy, you know, he, I, don't think, I don't know if he was Bible believer or not. He agreed with me, too. And he was a conservative. And the teacher was, you know, black man. He's like, he's like the only, you know, black conservative that he knows, you know. You know? <laughs> but they have that belief. It doesn't matter if you're, and you know, race doesn't matter. That's right. It's about what you believe in, yes. right? People try to make it race too much. Yeah. It doesn't matter, right? No. If you're white, black, yellow, green, in between. It's about what you believe in. That's right. If Lord gives you that kind of opportunity, just remember, sometimes 
He affirms it to you with people. There are other people out there, there are few and in between, who has the same belief. And he will encourage you. So don't forget that you're not the only one out there confessing Christ before man. There are many, many others out there. And you want to be that few out there who will be able to confess Christ before man. And when I say many, it's like you could actually meet them, see them, have fellowship with them. In the grand scheme of things, there's still few. So you fear man, and you're ashamed to say it. That's why you don't confess Christ before man. But this is probably the, one of the biggest reasons. Next reason is because you have impure life. You live in sin. It's hard to confess Christ before man if you have bad testimony. Right? Yeah. I mean, I don't think I could confidently like, witness to someone if I've been drinking with them. If I've been doing all this wicked stuff with them, there's no way. Because when you don't have conviction, there's no power. When you're living in sin, there's no conviction, even if you open your mouth for Jesus Christ. That's why you have to confess your sins and get right with the Lord. If you want to confess Christ before man. You don't want to be that person just, you know, being like a robot. Uh, it's my duty to do it, so I just do it. But there's no power. It's like a person who grew up in a church, who comes to every Wednesday service, street preaching, doing all that right stuff, but because they live in their secretive sin, there's no power or anything. So there are no fruits. So don't think that just because you come to street preaching, you're a great witness for Christ. Yeah. You're not. If you think like that, you're a haughty, proud, wicked person. Yeah. You should just be thankful that you have opportunity to go out there and preach anywhere. Just because you come to Sunday service, Wednesday service, you think that, you know what, I'm pretty good. You're not. Who knows what's going to happen today and tomorrow? If you have something happen to you, you might just give up your faith just like that. Yeah, that's true. What if you lose your loved one suddenly? What if you lose your house? What if you lose possession? You lose your job and everything. You think you're still going to stick around and serve Christ? Don't say yes. You don't know if it's going to happen. Yeah. And if it does happen to you, you don't know how you're going to react. Right. I mean, Christians are so full of it. That's why you don't confess Christ before man. You think you're all that. You think you're all good. There's other people doing it, but when I do it, you know, I'm still good at it too. What a bad mindset, right? That's why you have to check your heart. If I'm living in sin, no matter what I do, I am not going to be a great, I'm not going to be a right, I'm not going to be even a good Christian confessing Christ before man. You have to get yourself right. Sins in your life will stop you from confessing Christ at the most critical moment. True. Again, Fridays, when we're all together, there's 50 of us sometimes, you know, preaching. Yeah. You have power. You don't worry about it too much. Right? If someone walking by, you know, you're witnessing to them, and you have Six other brothers watching you, make sure that nothing happens to you, you know, or they chime in, you know, if your know, voice gets louder and louder. You, know, you have power in that. But when you're by yourself, I guarantee you, if you're living in sin, it's going to be very hard for you to open mouth. Right. Very hard. Yeah. I mean, you're not right with the Lord. How do you think you're going to open your mouth for the Lord? Right? right? You, you'd rather be a secret and silent believer during those times. That's why you have to make sure you take care of your sin problems today. Amen. If your heart says, you know what, I've been a, such a lazy Christian, ungrateful, unthankful Christian, you know, 
I haven't cried, cried like I should have, but I haven't. You know, that's a good start. Yes. You know the problem, but don't stop there. You actually have to get on your knees and confess your sins before the Lord. I mean, we say this first many, many times because it's very important. Something you and I have to practice every single day. John, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's God's promise. It's just that you and I have to do it. And this confession does not mean going to a priest and confessing. It's not going to your spouse and confessing. It's not going to your family and confessing. No, you go straight to Lord. You go straight to God and say, Lord, this is sin that I have to confess. And you have to be specific. Don't say, Lord, please forgive my sins for everything that I've done wrong past one week. No. You do it for every specific sin. If you don't remember, ask the Lord to help you remember. Yeah. Holy Spirit will help you remember things. Yeah. Right? As we age, we lose our memory. But that's not an excuse. Right. Because Holy Spirit, which liveth in you, comforts you and will help you as well. Amen. Then you and I know this. Fear of man has to go. Being shameful has to go. Impure life has to go. When you get rid of those three things, then you're at the right place to confess Christ before man. Right? Then you won't be these folks. Ezekiel 33.8. You know, we hear it all the time. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked, Man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But what? But his blood, Ezekiel 33, 8 says what? But his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Wow, you know, this is one of the hardest verses to accept. Because you and I meet different people many times. We go to, you know, we go shopping, right? And sometimes, you know, it's shame on me, like, man, maybe they don't, hopefully they don't talk to me, right? <laughs> Once we talk, we set up a, you know, acquaintance or whatever. Then if I don't give him the gospel, man, I'm going to be liable. Like, so the other day, needed to find certain type of cheese at a market. Uh, I can't find it anywhere. But there was worker there, right? Okay, okay. I asked, you know. And afterward, gave her a track, and she really liked it, you know. But I had to find other things. Oh, man. Uh, too many things to find. Not as nice person looking or, you know, you have that. You know, stereotype. Like, oh, Lord, you know, what's going on? You know, I can't find it. So talk to that person. Like, you just take your track out and just give it, right? But many times you talk to people, you know, you have conversations, and it ends without you ever giving them the gospel. And you never see them again. And if they don't get saved, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? Their blood will be required at your hand and my hand. Yes. Man, I'm going to have bloody hand at the judgment. Yes. Because, you know, I met a lot of people in life, and I didn't witness to every single person that I've met. I mean, that's shame on me. But is that going to stop me because I didn't do it in the past? No, no you've got to continue. Because Lord gives more opportunities each day. So you can't stop that. You can't be a dejected, you know, discouraged Christian all your life. You got to like stand up, get up, and just go on. Confess your sins. Get right with the Lord. How hard is it? You just give your heart to the Lord. Lord, you know, I've been a sorry Christian. I should have been confessing you all the time, but I didn't because of my, you know, fear of man, you know, because I'm shamed, you know, and because of my sins in my life. I want to get right. After I get right, I'm just going to go out there. And then, and then just like Philippians 4, 13, Lord, please strengthen me. In Acts 20, 26, it says, Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. 
for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. That should be our testimony, right? Is your record today where you could say, I am pure from the blood of all men? Man. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. I mean, that's Apostle Paul. I mean, the greatest Christian ever lived. We can't be like him exactly, but we could follow in his footsteps because he followed Jesus Christ. The less blood of man on your hand, so much better for you at the judgment, right? But if you do decide to stay as a secret believer, silent believer, then you better have a lot, a lot of bags. But I mean, in, in that heaven, when you get judged, I mean, last thing you want to happen is have all that blood, you know, keep on dripping out of your hand, right? right? But you don't know how, what's going to happen because, you know, it's out of our imagination and thoughts. I mean, the Lord's greater than everything. Yes. But it's for sure it's going to happen. Then what is the conclusion of all this? It is duty of you and I as a born-again Christian to confess Christ before man. Our job is to be a witness for him, not just when we feel like it, not just when someone forces us to do it, but it's every time we have to do it from our heart. Amen. Romans 1.14 says it. I mean, we owe the world, this lost world, we owe them to tell the gospel. Because someone told us that's what we got saved. So we owe them to tell the gospel, no matter what. They could spit at you, punch at you, you know, they could cuss at you, it doesn't matter. Whole goal is that you want that lost soul to get saved. I mean, Romans 1.14 says, I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. 1 Corinthians 9.22 says, I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. We can't save everybody, right? Well, first of all, the Lord does the saving anyways. What we can do is to plant the seed. Amen. What you and I can do as a debt debtor to those lost souls out there, Give them that seed of eternal life. Yes. It's up to them to decide. Right. But when you, know, when you realize that I'm a debtor to all these lost souls out there, then you have a different mindset. You know, when I owe you something, I want to pay you back. Right? I mean, unless you're like a horrible person who doesn't want to pay anything back, but many people, especially as a Christian, you owe it to the world to tell them the gospel, and that's confessing Christ before all these billions of lost souls out there. And Lord will give you strength. And you do more and more, you become more confident. Like Brother Nathan prayed, then you become a stronger and stronger soldier of Jesus yes. Christ. Amen. The more you are in the training, the more you are in the business of confessing Christ before man, the stronger you get. When someone who has a hard time, then you step up. Yes. And you'll be the one who will be confessing them. And they'll be encouraged. You know, what's the number one thing about war? It's morale. Churches who do not witness for Christ has very low morale. Churches that who witness for Christ not just Sundays and Wednesdays and Fridays, but throughout the day when members are out there confessing Christ before men, yeah. their morale is high. Amen. They love to, I mean, they just love to serve Christ. Amen. And that brings that perfect love. There's less bickering. There's less gossiping because everybody's just concentrated on one thing to be that witness, to be that person who confessed Christ. Amen. Then, what a testimony the body of Christ, especially our local church, will have in the sight of God, in the sight of saints, and in the sight of lost world out there. 
have you been confessing Christ before men? Will you, at least starting now at the end of the year and upcoming year, be confessing Christ before men, no matter what? Let's pray.